Math Humans. We're going to do 3.8 today. We're going to be talking about Newton's method. So our objectives are that we're going to approximate the zero of a function using Newton's method. So I've written this down so we can kind of get started. Newton's method is a way of approximating a zero, a zero using a series of tangent lines. So <coughs> I'm going to have a function. So this would be f of x. So my function has to be continuous and differentiable. f of a and f of b have to have different signs. So if they have different signs, by the intermediate value theorem, there's at least one zero in a to b. So what we're going to do is find an approximation of the zero by doing, oh, that's just really crappy, because it can't be tangent. You'll get the general idea. But we're going to use a series of tangent lines that are going to intersect and help us to find the zero. So I'm going to have a point. My picture is just really crappy. I'm sorry. F of x. And Newton's method says I'm going to assume that the tangent line, so I guess I could amend my curve a little bit to make us look better. So there's tangent. Ooh, that's better. So we'll just pretend that's yucky, and this will be my curve. We're going to assume that the tangent line <clears throat> to f at the point x f of x intersects <clears throat> the x-axis at about, I'll move it up in just a sec, at about the same place as the zero. So before the advent of calculators, this was a way of approximating a zero to lots of decimals of accuracy. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do before we actually start doing this is I'm just going to write down the method. And this is going to be one of those things that will always show up on a calculator portion of your test because the calculations are a little bit gruesome. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to choose an initial value of x. So sometimes what has to happen, and I know this is a little bit defeating, but what you have to do is graph the original function and find the actual zero, and then choose a value that's close to it. So this is showing a way of approximating a zero. Okay, so I'm going to choose an initial value of f that's near the, the actual zero. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the first <clears throat> approximation And that's going to be this lovely formula, x sub n plus 1 is equal to x sub n minus f of x sub n divided by f prime of x sub n. And we'll talk about a way to manage this data well in just a moment. And then we're going to use the first approximation. So I'm going to take the solution from doing this. So this is the value that I'm choosing. And then I'm going to evaluate the function and do the math. And then I'm going to get a number. And then I'm going to use this number. And I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to do a series of approximations. So I'm going to, I'm going to repeat the process until a desired level of accuracy is reached, until a desired level of accuracy is reached. Okay? All right. And because we're going to have multiple values that we need to manage, it's helpful if you manage this in a table. So <clears throat> let's just start walking through a problem. So we only have one example today because they're a little bit lengthy. So we're going to use Newton's method to approximate the zeros of f 
of x is equal to 2x to the third plus x squared minus x plus 1. And I want to stop when my successive iterations differ by, whew, that's a lot of writing, 0 0.1, 2, 3, 1. So I'm going to have four decimals of accuracy. So I would graph this initial function, and when I put that function in my calculator, <clears throat> so I'm going to go to my y equals, and I'm actually going to delete the stuff that I have there, <clears throat> and I'm going to do a zoom 6, and I'm going to see there's my original calculation, and notice that it's really close to 1. So I'm going to guesstimate that my initial guess, so it's going to look like this, I'm going to guess that my initial is a negative 1.2. And that's just by looking at the calculator and trying to come up with a decimal. The book would recommend that you fill in a table. And I'm going to show you how to make this table easier by using your calculator. So I'm going to have x sub n. And then I'm going to have f of x sub n. And then I'm going to have f prime of x sub n. And then I'm going to have x sub n minus f of x sub n over f prime of x sub n. Alrighty? <clears throat> and so I'm actually going to show you an easier way to do this in your calculator. So we are going to leave off these two steps. Okay, so we're just going to have our guess, and then we're going to have the solution, and then I'll show you how we manage. So for our first guess, we're going to have our x be a negative 1.2. But notice what I need in my calculator. So I'm going to put a series of equations in my calculator. So I'm going to go to my y equals, and there's the initial equation. The next thing that I'm going to put in is the derivative. So y sub 2, um, I'll write that right here. y sub 2 is going to equal my derivative. So it's going to be f prime of x, and that's going to be 6x squared plus 2x minus 1. So I'm going to enter my derivative, 6x squared, and then I have plus 2x minus 1, okay? And then on the third line, I'm going to actually enter this information, but I'm going to use my calculator, so I'm going to put in an x, and then I'm going to subtract, and then I'm going to do alpha f4, and I'm going to put in the original equation divided by alpha f4, and then I'm going to put in my derivative, okay? So I have put all of the table into my calculator. Alrighty, <clears throat> and now I'm going to quit. I'm going to go to my table set, and I'm going to have my table start, and I'm going to change it to auto so that maybe it will do what I want it to do. I'm going to tell my table to start at a negative 1.2, okay? And so I'm going to go to my table, and I'm actually going to put it, sorry, I need to be here, and I'm going to put an ask on my independent variable, and then I'm going to go to my table, okay? And my negative 1.2 is already in because I was playing with my calculator before we chatted. And I'm going to go over here because I need to see subsequent decimals. So my initial guess was a negative 1.2. And then I'm going to leave my calculator right there. I'm going to write down all of these decimals, 1.2351115. And I want it to go to 1, 2, 3, 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to do six decimals. I can't see that in the table, but I have to move my cursor and get to there. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my ask, and I'm going to input this. So the zero that I just found, and I'm going to enter this into my calculator, so negative 1.235115. So when I go back into my ask, I'm going to enter a negative 1.235115. So that's the zero that I just found. And I'm going to hit enter. And it, I'm going to go up and look at the decimal. And now I have a negative 
five four. That becomes my new approximation. So now, and just for posterity, I'm going to write that down. So the third iteration is going to be a negative one point two three three seven five four. So now I'm going to enter that value, negative 1.233754, and hit enter. And I'm going to go and look at my decimals. And again, I have to look here to see all of them. And this is a negative 1.233752. Notice that we have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 decimals, and then we're done because it said go until they differ by this, and mine is accurate to one, two, three, four, five decimal places. So that's actually really cool. Your calculator makes this process significantly easier to manage. This particular formula is a formula that you will need to memorize. It would be one of those things that I would add to your formula sheet. And so we're going to, and then you need to remember what you need to put into your calculator and to use your calculator efficiently. Alrighty. <clears throat> I'm also going to show you a different trick. So I'm going to quit and I'm going to show you the program. And I don't know if you have that on your calculator. I actually happen to have it on mine. <clears throat> to be able to use the program, you have to have your equation in your grapher. So I'm going to hit enter. It's going to ask me for my first x, and I'm going to tell it a negative 1.2, and I hit enter, and notice that it gives me this information, and then I hit enter again, hallelujah, it gives me the second one, and I hit enter again, and it gives me the third one, and then I have that information, okay? I'm going to quit, okay? I'm going to hit enter, second quit, second off. Sometimes I have to figure out how to get out of it. That's the hard part. I'm going to go to my program. I'm going to edit, and I'm going to go down to Newton, and I'm going to show you. So this is the first screen, okay? And if you would like to take screenshots of that, and then if you don't have this in your calculator, go in and put it in, and that's it. It's actually a fairly short program. I will tell you that... Um, we can talk about how to put this into your calculator, but input, these live in your catalog, which is up above your zero. So if you want to get um, some practice programming, then you can put that program in your calculator. If you don't want to put the program in your calculator, this is a great system to manage by putting all of those equations in your calculator. Alrighty, that's it for today. I will see you soon.